Okay, a level six quadratic. This is as hard as it gets. In fact, this is the final level. And this one example has every possible problem that could occur actually occurring. This is actually the prime example or a prime example that has every possible problem associated with it. Let's solve three x squared plus five x plus one equals nine. Now, most curricular people will probably object to the fact that I have equals nine. They say, subtract, subtract nine from both sides, get zero on the right. I don't. Because I know I'm probably going to change this number and add things to both sides. I'm going to change this later on. So why change things now? It's only going to change later. So my advice is, don't do any extra work. If there's a 9 on the end, leave us 9 on the end. Great. All right. But I do see 3x squared piece. I do see a 5x piece. And then some constants are going to get, get, mess, uh, get fixed up. All right. Oh, but already I'm having a problem. Already having a problem. Because I don't think I like 3x squared. Do you like 3x squared? No, it's going to get us into square root land. So actually, this is the first type of example I put a number in front of the x squared, and I gave us an awkward number in front of the x squared. All right, all right, problem number one. How can we fix that up? How could I avoid that problem? Because I could do square roots, but I just don't want to do root 3x and root 3x. Ugh. All right, so I think about this a little while. I say, okay, it would be nice if that number at the front itself was a perfect square, like a 4 or a 9 or 25 or an 81 or something. Well, actually, I can see I can make it a 9 pretty quickly by multiplying everything through by 3. Let's multiply by that front number. So make this 9x squared plus 15x plus 3 equals 27. So let's make it 9x squared and life is good. 9x squared because that is a 3x times a 3x and I've got symmetry with nice numbers. Great. Ooh. Oh, I'm ready to move on to the next piece. 15x. That's an odd number. All right, from last level, let's multiply everything through by 4. So I get 36x squared plus 60x plus 12 is, oh, 5408, which seems absurd. Why am I getting these huge numbers? But, oh, oh, I made that even. Have I ruined my perfect square at the front? No, I lucked out. 36x squared is still a nice perfect square. It's actually 6x by 6x. I've got my symmetry with nice whole numbers. All right, okay, so that piece is okay. This piece, 30x and 30x, is fine. I can handle that. That's nice whole numbers split in a symmetrical way. Great. Something times 6x makes 30x. 5, 5. If I want a final piece of 25, I don't have it. But I'm not going to panic. Because there's something in life I want, make it happen. Add 13. Deal with the consequences. Add 13. So what I've really got here now is what, 36x squared plus 60x plus 25 is 121. That is what my problem really is right there. Oh, 36x squared, 60x plus 25 is really 6x plus 5 as a square. 6x plus 5 as a square, apparently equals 121. Life is good. 121 happens to be a very nice whole number for squared, 11 or negative 11. So 6x plus 5 is 11 or negative 11, and off we go. We can finish that all up. Subtract 5, divide everything by 6, and off we go. That's it. That's it. Welcome to the quadratus method. It will solve any quadratic equation by just drawing a nice symmetrical box and following your wits. If you have any problems along the way, just follow your wits. Try multiplying by 4. Try multiplying by 7 to get perfect squares. Whatever your wits tell you to do, try it. It might be helpful. It might actually work. It might be brilliant. You now can solve any textbook quadratic problem whatsoever at this point. It's perfect. This box method will never let you down. But... I haven't actually done my task. I was asked to talk about the quadratic formula. The truth is, we've actually been doing the quadratic formula all along. This picture is the quadratic formula. So my next task right now is to show you that that is the case. I'm going to solve a general quadratic equation like this one, but make it very abstract and show you it really is the quadratic formula in disguise. So let me do that next. I'm going to clean the board. And if you're up for it, we'll have a general abstract discussion next that this is really the quadratic formula that most people have been asked to memorize. It just, just there in a picture. Here it goes. Clean the board. Back in a moment. All right, here goes. Let's now actually do the quadratic formula. Now, the quadratic formula assumes you've arranged matters. So you've got an ax squared plus a bx plus a c, a number here, equals zero. So this actually wants you to make the right-hand side always equal to zero. Okay, remember, I wasn't doing that because I knew I was going to change the numbers around. Okay, it's fine. But this formula says, we'll assume you've got zero there. Great. So I'm going to now do that symmetrical box method, the quadratus method, on that very formula. 
Now, just to cover myself, I don't know what A actually is, but I don't know if that's a perfect square, but let me multiply, multiply everything through by A to get a perfect square there. A squared X squared plus ABX plus AC equals zero. That gives me a perfect square there. Also, I don't know what the numbers A and B actually are. If this turned out to be odd, I'd be in fraction land. So let me just cover myself again and solve that problem by multiplying everything through by four. 4a squared x squared plus 4abx plus 4ac equals 0. So let me work with that equation instead. And by the way, now you can see now that multiplying by 4 will never ruin your perfect squares because 4a squared is really what, 2a times 2a? Great. So multiplying 4 will never ruin any perfect squares you set up. Rand. Now, let me draw the box on this. Now, I'm going to run out of board space, but the idea is what I'm going to do is exactly what I've been doing for, for level 5. I start by drawing the box, and I have to start erasing things in a moment because I need lots of board space because the form is going to be long. But there's a 4a squared x squared piece, which must come for what? 2 times a times x, 2ax. 2ax times 2ax is 2 times 2 times a times a times x times x, 4 times a times a times x times x. Bingo. Got that piece. 4abx split into two symmetrical parts. So it'd be a 2abx and a 2abx makes 4abx's. Something times 2ax makes 2abx, b. Something times 2ax makes 2abx, b. Which means the piece I want here is b squared, which I don't have. So what I'm going to do then is I'll get that 4ac out of the way, subtract 4ac from the left and also from the right, consequences. And I want a b squared there, so let's add a b squared on the left, add a b squared on the right, consequences. So that means I'm really dealing with this equation. 4a squared x squared plus 4abx plus b squared, yeah, that's right, equals, I've got a b squared minus a 4ac. Let me work with that equation instead. Now, for those that have gone through the curriculum, b squared minus 4ac, that might sound like it rings a bell. Okay, um, I need board space. So get rid of this part. And if you need to review stuff, you always rewind the video. All right, here goes. Okay, let me get rid of the star. So I went through all this work so I can actually draw. Whoops, I need the 2ab. So the, yeah, oh, that was, what was that? That was 2ax, sorry, 2ax. I went through all this work so I can make this picture complete. There's a complete perfect square representing my equation. There's the 4a squared x squared plus the 4abx plus the b squared is really a 2ax 2 2A, 2 plus b by 2ax plus b squared. A 2ax plus b as a square apparently equals this area, b squared minus 4ac. If this is a positive number, you'll have two square roots. If this number is zero, you have exactly one square root. Square root of zero is zero, and that's the only square root of zero. If this is negative, good luck. There are no real solutions. Oh, that's why some people are obsessed with this thing called the discriminant. Okay, but you just see it. When you do it, you'll just see, see you've got either zero, one, or two solutions. But let me keep going. Uh, let me actually solve this thing. Uh, I'm going to need room because it's going to be long and messy. Uh, something squared is that. So my something, my 2ax plus b is either the square root of that, b squared minus 4ac, or the negative version of that, b squared minus 4ac. Uh, b, I've got a plus b, let me get out of the way, let me add negative b to both sides. Now, I should like, just like subtract b, subtract b, most people are obsessed with putting the negative b in front, so I'll just follow curriculum convention. I don't know why we want to do it that way, but apparently we do it that way. Think of this as negative b plus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, or negative b minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. All right, so there's the two solutions. Or make a big or so you can see it. Um, woo -hoo -hoo -hoo, except I've got two ax equals these things. I want x all by itself. Let's divide everything by two a. X is either negative b plus the square root of b squared minus four ac all over two a, or negative b minus the square root of b squared minus four ac all over two a. Voila, voila. This picture is the quadratic equation. If you want to memorize that, or if you're required to memorize that, mm, okay, it's not very 21st century to have to memorize stuff, because if, if the goal is to memorize that to get answers, ugh. But the thinking process that got us here is amazing. I actually love this stuff. I will always teach solving quadratic equations, not because I need to solve quadratic equations in life. Even as a research mathematician, I do not remember ever solving a quadratic equation. Um, but the fact is this thinking process, this problem solving was just actually stunning and wonderful. And there it is. So the quadratic formula that most textbooks start with often um, is actually the end of a lovely process of thinking.
thinking. So I hope you can enjoy the thinking. I went really fast in these videos, not many examples, but I've got all the text written up for you. If you want to look at the text and go through it slowly again, it's all there and definitely discuss this with your friends, your colleagues, your teachers and all the rest. This is actually worth talking about. This is grand, grand stuff. And it's a great human achievement too, before computers were around. Wonderful stuff.